welcome back. <laughs> We're working on the transom. In the last video, uh, part one, we did the cutting fitting of the first layer. Got that all glued. And now we need to do the next two, three layers total, and then the bright work. So we have a lot to do. We have a lot to cover. I am ready. I'm ready to be done with this. I'm ready to be out there sailing. So let's get at least one step closer. We got a lot to cover. I don't want to waste any time. Let's get into it. long to figure this out is beyond me I've been going up and down up and down and up and down because you know I tried to tried to put like a salt horse type thing up here on the scaffold and it just wasn't working I just I'm halfway through the transom and look it's so so simple oh the mighty power of a bucket all I had to do this whole time mixing up some rot resistant primer the boat has been on the hard long enough that it's starting to dry out a little bit and so we got some paint chipping you know flaking off so he's gonna go around while I'm working on the transom gonna chip some paint and paint that primer on there So what he's doing exactly, he's chipping off the loose paint and then painting the rot resistant primer on it. So that way it, it doesn't continue losing moisture so fast. So you have to do this because what will end up happening is it'll, see all this area here, all this, it'll just shuck the paint off. Once the paint's gone, there's nothing keeping moisture in the hull and the wood will dry and begin to split and crack. Uh, the seams will start opening up. It's 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 pretty pretty bad, and because of the transom, you know, I've been on the hard way longer than I had originally anticipated being on the hard in the middle of summer. So the last the last time of year you want to haul out, you never want to haul out in the middle of summer. But you know, it is what it is. I mean, I got the boat, so I'm doing what I am now. So how are we looking here on the rudder? We're looking good. We've got not too many spots, but definitely need to patch them all up, get them all covered. Good and deal. And of course, we've got two sides. So I'm getting this side first because the sun's about to start beating down on me. And I'm head on over to the other side. Well, 
You hear that, Ryan? You know what that is? That's called rain. Dude, we got this done in, I mean, like, absolute nick of time. Let me get this uh, on here. Holy cow. The rain. Rain, rain, rain. The second layer of the transom cut and fitted. Awesome. And now, I mean like literally the nick of time. It's starting to rain. Let's go ahead and get all these tools put so up quick. Cool. Freaking hammer and rain. Pull your end on the edge and just make sure it's over. Thank you, sir. So, Ryan and I were hiding from the rain. He's getting an idea of what it's like here in St. Mary's. Here on Shalimar. Basically, work five minutes, rain three days. Work five minutes, rain three days. Standard. Dude, look, it's a lake already. It's only been raining like 10 minutes. If it keeps up, we're just gonna go sailing. Just, the hardest part will be getting up the ladder. Look at this. Ryan and I are getting ready. We got the uh, second layer there cut and fitted, but we're getting ready to glue it. So, and it's, man, compared to the last glue, the last layer, it is so much nicer. <laughs> last time it was, it was really, 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 really hot. I mean, it, it was, you know, it was at least a 106 or something. Today it's 68 degrees, so way better <laughs> it feels amazing outside so yeah we're just kind of getting it going looks good you ready ryan yes sir always ready always ready <laughs> you gotta say that with like a, you gotta say it like clint eastwood or something always ready five <laughs> all right see you guys tomorrow second layer is on it's all glued and fared off ready for the final layer Marking our screw holes. Since this is the last layer, we want to make sure everything is visually pleasing, right? And symmetrical. Now I want to set my screw holes for around the edge. And I want to set a good distance. We're going to lock it in here, and I'm going to draw it with this and then trace over it with a marker.
Now, see, the other layers, you never see the screws, so it didn't really matter where I put them. This one, on the other hand, you're going to see the plugs where the screws are. Um, not only are we going to be doing steel pan head screws to clamp it down, we're then going to remove it and we're going to be putting bronze screws in. And that's belt and suspenders, right? It's epoxied, it shouldn't need any screws whatsoever at all. I'm still going to put bronze fasteners in it and have bronze fasteners holding it in the frame. Just, I don't know, just in case. I just feel better, you know? There's no, you know, if the glue were to fail, it's not just going to pop off which it wouldn't anyway, but belt and suspenders <laughs> anyway, so there we have it. Today is a pretty rare honor. <laughs> Pedro, the bosun from the Santa Maria, has come to help with Shalimar. <laughs> the captain, Miguel, he's coming too later. Uh, so yeah, we'll have some tall ship sailing crew helping with the boat. <laughs> awesome, let's get at it. I'm really happy. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Captain of the Santa Maria. We're gonna go for a little walk and then I'm gonna put them to work. <laughs> pressure up. Up. Don't, don't put pressure there. Okay. So you're gonna leave it like this so it doesn't bow this. So then this goes flat. Then you fold it, fold it over, see? Okay. So what we do is we push it in and then as much pressure this way he's going to put as possible so that way we don't have a gap between the planks. You got to go way up, way, way up, up hard, up real hard. So we're sitting around trying to figure something out here. See, I cut this. And you gotta cut them all. See, look, it's all ragged, but it's ragged for a reason, right? Everything has to be cut. It's perfect, and when you see, see? When you have their gap, it's all perfect to the plank. However, this down here is too thin. I can't get anything to, to glue there, nothing there's no way I could put a fastener in there. It's just not enough. So even though this is perfect. What do you think, Pedro? I think you need a, a wider plank. A yeah. wider plank. Yeah. We're going to have to do a wider plank. Uh, looks. These guys down there, they're hard at work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the day's, the day's pretty much done. The sun's going down. End of work day. But we got, you know what? We got a lot done today. So it looks good. Thanks for coming. Well, Appreciate thank you it. For your thanks. lessons. Miguel, thanks for coming. Thank you. It was awesome. Ryan, thanks for coming. Thank you for Ryan made us some awesome food. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Yeah, it's like Jambalaya. Uh, so we're all mm -hmm. sitting. <laughs> Having a nice night eating. Oh, night. It's a beautiful night. <laughs> so while Ryan finishes painting stuff, I'm in a race against daylight to try to get this closed up. I only have two more pieces of wood to do. But we gotta try to hurry. 
see what we can get. Gotta take everything off just to get one thing on. bottom triangle piece luckily is almost flat but this guy he is not and when it's this short mm -mm. let's see Shoo. come on get in there oh man yuck man Shoo. well I ran out of daylight the, I fitted that last one, and then it broke. <laughs> the, the tip of it broke off, so I have to do that again. And we're not doing that tonight. So, all right. Man, sun up to sun down every single day. All the days. Ryan's doing school stuff, because he does that at night. So, that's all right. Uh, yeah, just go ahead and get this all put together now. <laughs> I am being a chef today. So we got to bend the uh, the last one of the last little strips, and <laughs> so we're using a microwave here at the boatyard. And you'll see the wood's wrapped in uh, terry cloth towels and soaked in water. And I'm trying to microwave it to kind of steam it, right? Because I don't want to have to build a steam box for a piece of wood that's only so big. So we're gonna. Steam it and then probably clamp it to this here uh, chair and see if we can bend it. Okay, our thick surprise should be ready. We will take it out of the microwave. Yo, crap! It's a little, it's a little hot. That's a spicy meatball. Golly Moses, that is, jeez. Shoo, hot. Holy crap. Ouch. Uh, hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, hot potato, holy crap. And it dries almost instantly. Okay. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there, buddy. That's it. It is bending. splitting just want a little bit of a bend and here is the result see that that's what we want just bent enough that we can fit it into the transom better without having to kill our fingers trying to do it so this ought to this ought to get us awesome so let's see if this works the uh, the bend which is what was getting me you know, at night, when I was trying to do this and it was getting dark, it broke. The corner of it broke because I just I wasn't strong enough to force it over by myself. So, this bend looks great. I mean, that's, it looks like it'll work. So, we got to pull all this off, though, to get this one thing on. Okay, what we got. It's so crazy to not have to bend it at all. Look at that. It just kind of sits in there where it's supposed to. <laughs> I don't have to go like, it just doink. It's right where it goes. Yeah, it's perfect. Okay, so we just got this cut. The very bottom piece, which means the last layer of the transom is cut and fitted. Um, so we're just putting everything back together. I need, I do need to drill some holes and put some fasteners in there and we'll do that but right now it's great so let's get it put together and see what she looks like all together okay get in there yeah
That's it. Check it out. That is awesome. Cool. I'm gonna hop down and take a look. The final layer. Cut and fitted. Still got a epoxy, but look at that. Isn't that awesome? It looks freaking amazing. So, so good. Yeah. So, what we're using for the transom is Teak Decking Systems FE-180A. What this is for is gluing planks down, like uh, deck planks, onto fiberglass. So, it's pretty stout stuff and it remains flexible. But I'm just curious how strong it is. You know, I wanted to use this because it's really thick. You don't need a filler. You don't need a thickener. You don't need any of that. Um, but I want to know how strong it is. You know, I've been using this stuff for a while. And I don't know. I just never, never did it. So anyway, I have a big glob of epoxy on here. And it's cured rock hard. And so I want to see what it takes to get it off of this hunk of wood. So let's, let's see if we can break it off. So that's the wood split. Well, chewing up my table, but, so we got the, the epoxy broken. Look at that. Just took the wood right with it. Okay, Ryan, will you hold this? Put your hand right there. I'm gonna try to use this as a chisel and chisel it off. We might be getting somewhere. Grab one of my clamps, one of the screw clamps. Cause I, you know, they, they say that this is really, really strong. I wanna know how strong. So far we've got wood failure, which means really strong, but we're gonna keep going and we're gonna, I'm gonna try to get it off of here. I'll make this even tighter. Can you grab me another clamp? I can do that. But I just have always been curious how strong of a bond does it make on wood by itself? Because you know, transom is glued onto the transom frame and I never want it to pop free or break free. So let's just see here. Like some resisting pressure on it? Yeah. And we'll chisel it off a little bit. Please grab that chunk. So even chiseling it, look at this, even chiseling it. A little bit of wood came with it even chiseling it so this stuff is great it's not no matter the shock load of the sea no matter what it just breaks the wood the wood breaks before this comes off it so i don't think i'll ever have to worry about the transom falling off and i i genuinely have been kind of you know up at night thinking about that like what happens if the epoxy fails you know but teak decking systems I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm not opposed to it. So, if you're out there watching, you need to pay somebody to use your stuff. <laughs> no, it's, I guess it's good stuff. It's really good. I would say it passes any kind of adhesion tests, that's for sure. I mean, everywhere the epoxy broke, the wood broke. It did not come off. Even that, see, I just popped that and look, took a little hunk of wood with it. So yeah, this stuff, awesome. This is a little bit different for this, for this one, we've got to remove all of the strips because it's horizontal. So we got to start down there, work our way up, start up here, work our way down and meet in the middle. Instead of removing it and gluing a piece at a time, because it's horizontal, it's, it doesn't go on the same way. We have to start at the bottom and go up and then go from the top and come down because the way the bevel is, right, you can't get to it. So you remember on the corners, you know, where I had to remove a few to get it in there? Well, this is like that, but it's the whole 
bottom and the whole top. So we have to end somewhere in the widest planks there. So the other thing to save time, another thing we've done here, I went ahead and painted the edges here. You know, got that done. So that's that's already done. We don't have to worry about that being in the way. Um, so now we're gonna do the same thing, epoxy, and then the seam compound and all of that. Um, the other thing we've done, because we've removed every every strip off of here, see, I also we also numbered them, right, from the top down. That will enable us to kind of grab through and chuck them up there, and it ended up being 22 strips, but more like 33 total with the butts, but 22 high. <laughs> What are you doing, Gizmo? What are you doing? I like how dogs around here just come and hang out with us. That's fun. Cute little puppy. Good morning. So we're gonna trim some of the glue off of here. And we have some high spots, you know, where the planks kind of twist and stuff. So I use the plane first. And this is a block plane, Stanley block plane. And I have it set to where it's pretty aggressive. It'll take a lot of material off. And then I have a smoothing plane. But we do this first, then we go to the sander. So. Now, we gotta do a couple of things. First thing, I'm gonna seal the end grain of the planks there with epoxy and acetone. Just to seal it so we can paint it and it'll, the paint will stay on. But I, I wanna seal the end grain. So, we got the initial shaping done with the transom and it looks great. Got the uh, end grain here sealed with epoxy and acetone and the initial shape is good however we're not there yet we have a few things we have to do um, we're gonna have to long board it you know and that'll remove any of the fine lumps of mud. like right now you can't see it but once it, once you put the gloss on here you're gonna see waviness and stuff so we're gonna long board it we also want to put silicon bronze fasteners in the holes where the framing is. Kind of a belt and suspenders approach. I mean, the epoxy is, that's it's probably good. You don't need it, but I just feel better with it in there. Um, but before we do any of that, you see here, there's little gaps. The It's, it's glued on, the strips are glued, they're well glued, but you know, it 
squished up between in some places and some places it didn't. But before I do any long boarding, before I do anything else, I want to fill all of these. I want to get it all filled. Some of them, you know, look, see here? That's all got to be filled. It's all got to be smooth. So what we're going to do is we're, we're going to mix up epoxy and sawdust. So I've got some, some teak dust and I kind of, I add in some other wood <laughs> that teak dust becomes almost, almost black, which sometimes I want. But I'll add in just a little bit of some of my other tropical hardwoods to kind of bring the color out just a little bit. go ahead and start countersinking these holes so that way we can get the bronze fasteners and the plugs in there. Now we're going to put the fasteners in the transom. I have silicon bronze fasteners. You know, I don't know. There might be some voids somewhere that I don't know. Um, the holes are already here, so I'm not making new holes i'm not doing anything I'm, i might as well put a fastener in it because if there is a void maybe you know slamming in waves or something a potential something could spring free so very very unlikely but we're going to make it even more unlikely like i said i'm already here there are already holes why why not why not put a fastener in it? typically when you are putting fasteners into fine woodworking you want to use a screwdriver or a bit and brace. You want to do it by hand. It's really not advisable to use a power tool. Um, that goes for stainless, it goes for anything because you can drive it in too hard and then split the wood. So that's problem number one. Problem number two, when you're using bronze and a flathead, slot head bronze, it can even be more of a problem because you could strip the head out. So unless you are extremely familiar with and have a good relationship with your personal impact driver and you have used it and you know it and it's your tool, don't attempt this. Even me, I'm used to my driver, I've done this all the time, there's even a risk there. You know, sometimes things happen. So I, I have to caution against grabbing your impact driver and going to town. Um, this is, I don't know, somewhere around 250 holes. Um, I have 200 fasteners. So I really don't want to be doing this 200 times. You know, that literally take the rest of the day. So I'm going to use my impact, but I'm just saying, you know, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> if you do it, be careful. And the, the trick is go slowly. Go very slow and just don't, don't try to rip them in there because it's not gonna go well. The other thing I'm gonna do, and this is very important, once again, everything is about the water and I go overboard. If you haven't been able to tell, I go extreme. I, I make sure that if water gets in there, and it's really when, not if, water will find its way in everywhere, um, I like to protect against that at all costs. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna seal, even though the plugs are gonna be sealed, even though the whole thing is gonna be sealed, doesn't matter, I wanna seal each individual screw. So I have my rot resistant primer, and what I'm doing is I'm just dipping the tip, that's it, just the tip. You don't need to go crazy. We don't want to make a mess. It'll do a few things. It'll actually help prevent the fastener from corroding and it'll seal the hole. If any water gets it in there, then not only is it going to have to break the seal that I put on the transom, the seal of the plug, then it's going to have to get past the seal on this screw here and then it's going to have to survive the rot resistant primer. So, you know, overboard, overboard, overboard a thousand times. 
hopefully makes a better product in the end. Well, there we go. They all have fasteners, which is awesome. I actually like the way it looks. I think it looks awesome. Of course, we're, we're gonna plug it. We gotta plug it, but yeah, it looks, looks great. And you can see here what I'm talking about. If you look in, see if we can get some light in here. See there? So you can see the seal, the paint seal all the way around. Which is, which is what we want. Right there, see? Nothing but the best for my lady. Yeah. All right. I got all the plugs. 3 eighths plugs. People, people are always asking me. They're always surprised that I don't make my own plugs. Well, why? <laughs> Why would I? I mean, sure, I could. I could make 200 something plugs if I wanna spend all day doing it and I wanna chew up wood that I could be using for other things. Now, when I have a massive amount like this, I buy them. I, I, don't, I don't make them like that. Now, if I'm doing something out of some other kind of wood other than teak that's rare, then sure, yeah, I'll cut my own plugs, but no, I buy them. It's way cheaper to buy this. What was this? What was the price on that? Well, it certainly wasn't $39,000. So whatever it was, it wasn't much. Like what? 10 bucks, 15 bucks, something. Whatever. Cheaper than buying the lumber and saves me a lot of time. So yeah. anyway, let's get after it. Okay, so check it out. When you're when you're doing a wooden plug, right? Yeah, I like to match the colors. See that? This color's wrong. The color's nice. So you line up the grain, and you kind of I buy them where they're kind of tapered on the end, where I can start to stick it there, and then you're gonna drive it home. But when you do, you use a wooden mallet, not a metal hammer. So you drive it. You hear that? That's as far as it goes. Now, there is another reason why we align the grain, besides for looks, right? It looks better, sure, but we align the grain because wood expands and contracts. If it's, if it's aligned with the strip, it'll expand and contract with the strip. If you were to put the grain perpendicular, it'll expand and contract this way and leave an oval shape. Not as critical here, but that's one of the main reasons. So when you put a plug in, glue, plug goes on, drive it in with a wooden mallet, and that's that. What's up, buddy? You want a treat? Okay. You're gonna get a treat? Come on. Come on, buddy. Hey, how you doing? Good boy. You sit. Oh. What a good boy. be asking yourself why don't I just do this with a chisel like you see everybody in all the videos do the reason is because that's dumb that's the reason um, the problem with it if you're doing softwood you can slick through it or big ones maybe but a lot of times the problem with a chisel is it'll break even a really sharp chisel it'll break below it you know what? Some people do it. That's great. I'm, I'm glad for them. I don't. Uh, it always breaks below the surface, and then I have a divot, and you've got to fill it, and it's 
I just, I'd rather use good old multi-tool, nips it off, and then we'll sand it down. It works just great. There's no reason to do anything else, in my opinion. for more sanding! Oh, you can't even snap. put your arms down, you're just like... You take the floor, <laughs> you take a flank and snap it in half. Like... Got a pretty dang high tide today. Sheesh, king tides. Holy cow, the yard is flooded, man. Wowzers, look at that. Ah, crazy. So the tide is like mega ridiculous today. Look at this. It's even coming under the tent. I mean, yeah, it's raining, but this is not rain water. This is the tide. It's crazy land. I'll go out and I'll show you. Hang on. It's cold and it's wet. Raining. Okay, check it out. Mega tide. Look at this. Nuts. Whoa, all the debris, all our, our blocks and everything are floating away. Gee whiz, look at this. Nuts, king tide. Yeah. Gee whiz. I wanted to walk down to what used to be the dock and the travel lift. Man, oh man, look at this. Wow, it's all a wash. Now I'm, I'm getting closer to need you here. And one of my boots, I think, might have a leak. <laughs> sucks. It's kind of weird to see waves coming into the marina, man. Like, that's strange to me. Man, oh man, this is crazy. This would be the day to splash. <laughs> oh, awesome! Where'd you get that guy? He floated up. <laughs> I know. Huge. Oh, he's sinking. Hey, he needs a new bottom job. He needs a new bottom job. Oh, well. The perfect storm. Oh, that Walker Bay, I think, is tied off. Might be sailing shallow more sooner than I thought. <laughs> I think he's coming in. Holy cow. All right, well, it's built, it's sanded, it's fared down. The, uh, the top is sealed, the edges are sealed. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. It's kind of a shame we got to paint it blue now, uh, you know, to match the hull. But uh, blue's pretty too. I'm just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to have you guys' brains explode for a moment. No, we're not going to paint this. It's too pretty. So, this is what is potentially the most important moment for any piece of woodworking's life. This is the moment that it goes from being a project to whatever it is that you built. You know, when you build a table, a beautiful table. When you put the finish on it, the varnish on it, then it becomes a table. It's a project before that. So this is about to become a transom. Uh, it wasn't a transom before, 
it's about to be one now. So we're going to put the, uh, the primer using all wood, MA. It's the only bright work I, stuff I ever use. And I am going to use it, make a video about how to use this, but it's going to be separate. Here we go, guys. Are you ready? Am I ready? <laughs> All right. Man, oh man, that looks beautiful. Now that's just the primer, so, you know, it'll be a little spotty, like you'll see in the reflection there. You don't have to worry about that. All that'll come out, it's just soaking into the wood grain. And then tomorrow when I come out here, it'll be pretty well all the same, and I'll do a light sanding, but man, it looks amazing. Looks so good. So, so good. All right, well, see you tomorrow. Now we're gonna do the first coat of gloss. And uh, with this stuff, you don't need to worry about the first couple of coats very much. You get it on as best you can. I'm gonna put it on a roller. Here it is a little closer. There you go. That's just the first coat. That's nice. See, it really, really levels down. And you'll get like little spots like this guy and stuff like that. But as you put more on, the more and more mirrored it becomes and the more it'll level out. Second verse, same as the first. Except more gnats. So same song, more gnats. What's the musical notation for gnats? Is it natation? Musical natation? <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. So today is the end of a couple of things. Um, we're gonna put the last coat on the transom. Um, that and this is the last day of Ryan being here. He's gotta go. He's got some family stuff he's gotta do. He's going to Colorado, so it's his last day here. Um, it was good to have him. Awesome to have the help. He's just waking up. like the worst possible job for him to do he already painted the bilge but <laughs> gotta find something but find something worse than that I yeah dare you. all right well let's get out there and let's get this coat on there so if you look see there's like ripplies now it's time i'm going to take an interface pad and 320 grid sandpaper and we're going to do a leveling, a leveling sand. Just want to show you what we're after here. So this is the leveling sand that I just did. See, and I knocked down, you get all the lumpies and bumpies, A, from the wood grain, but also from the roller and, you know, 
just in general. So you get enough coats on there that you can start taking it down. You can do a, a light leveling sand after about the third coat. You can do another one. Each successive coat, but really doesn't make sense until about the fifth coat. This is the seventh. Um, they call for between six and eight. So we're gonna do, the final coat here is gonna be eight. I think it looks good. You know, you can't get everything. Like, you get these little tiny spots. If you keep if you keep sanding to try to get all of it, you're gonna get right through the finish. You're gonna burn right through the finish down to wood and you don't want that. So, you know, 99% of it, it's, it's fine. So for this last coat here, what I'm gonna do is brush it. So I use the roller to, to build up coats quickly, you know, and, and they don't matter as much. I can dry brush them down and get it knocked down. But then you do the leveling sand, but then for the final coat, I, I like to brush it. And the successive coats I do after this, I'll most likely just brush them. Um, the roller's nice because I can get uh, a decent film thickness on quickly, but even it doesn't leave the best finish. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and brush this on. I would say that's not too bad. <laughs> Beautiful shine. You could almost read in that reflection. Look at that. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. All right, here it is. Can't believe it's that time. Going away. Man. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, man, it was a lot of work, but it's finished. Ryan is gonna come down, we're gonna have a little celebratory drink and it's kind of his farewell, you know, he's gotta go, so yeah. I didn't prepare a speech. I didn't either. Speed! Bye! Speed! <laughs> Bye, Felipe! Bye! See ya! I'll see you. See you, Zlada. Now, I'm sad to see you go. It's been a lot of fun, man. I'll be back. Yeah, I know. I'm sad to be back. You know, I was glad Ryan was here, but I'm also glad you guys could be here. Sometimes when you're caught up in the middle of all this boat projects and stuff like that, yeah, it can be daunting, but you get lost in it, you know? And uh, it's easy to go off in your mind, in your own world. It's also easy to become distracted by things, and, and so it's nice to be able to include people on this journey. I do have a Patreon. In the event you want to show support, great. And what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to put more detailed things on my Patreon. So in these big videos, there's no way for me to put everything in there. It's just, it's already such a huge video. So the minute details of exactly how to varnish or exactly how to epoxy or exactly what choice of fasteners or whatever that I use my way I'm going to make specific, very detailed videos and instruction on my Patreon. Yeah, I mean, Ryan coming here is probably the best thing that's happened to me since I've had the boat because he really helped get me to this point. Um, and that's awesome. But you guys have helped too. Just showing support and, and rooting for me and comments and liking things and, and that's really awesome. So keep that up and next we got to do the name board get the hole painted and get her splashed so stay tuned see you next time bye Ryan thanks for your help bud <laughs>